On the edge of known space, a cargo liner crashes on a rim world, leading three survivors to struggle for their lives on this hostile new planet. Among the survivors was a chemist known as Walter Heisenberg Black, along with two other survivors, a high school dropout and druggie Jesse Lightish Redman, and a former police officer, Michael German name. They hatch a plan to not only survive, but to thrive. They are going to just out of nowhere break bad to produce and sell the drug known by the residents of the Rimworld as Flake. They're going to need to put that idea on hold for now. First things first, they need to survive or else they're gonna die. They get started gathering the debris from their crash ship and stockpiling them, taking inventory of what they have. Using what they have, they build their new home in the ruins of a long forgotten building. With beds placed and a roof over their heads, they will need to expand their current building to also provide a roof for their supplies. Moving from one project to the next, there is so much to do. Not only do they have to think about shelter, they also have to think about food, as they only have a limited amount of survival meals from their crash, and they're getting hungry. Jesse, who has the highest plant skill, begins clearing an area for them to grow a sustainable food source of rice. With their bases for survival covered, Heisenberg thinks now is the time to name their faction a new home. I think a perfect faction name for them would be Los Poyos Hermanos. And the settlement will be called Albuquerque. They won't have long to celebrate their founding. The hostility of this planet is about to say what's up, Albuquerque. This greeting comes in the form of their first encounter with the rival factions on the planet, the people of Camarero. Ryro, I, I don't know how to say it. Mike, being the most qualified, grabs the revolver from the crash and heads out to deal with this new threat. Mike was hit by a cartoon spike club a few times, but otherwise came out of the encounter fine, having dealt with the threat. Soon their rice fields have matured, and Jesse, we need to cook. Meals, that is. In between cooking meals, Heisenberg is using his spare time to research what they will need to produce Flake. While Heisenberg is busy researching, Mike and Jesse begin construction of the lab. They will pose as simple rice farmers. That way, they probably won't be killed for their Flake. Side note, a bunch of ducks self-tame, so it looks like we'll also be using the cover of being duck farmers. Ducks and drugs, what a combination. While Mike and Heisenberg were gathering steel to build the indoor hydroponics farms for their drug lab, they discovered an ancient danger. Fearing that they don't have the manpower to eliminate this threat just yet, Mike and Heisenberg decided uh, they should mine steel somewhere else. With their safely gathered steel, they begin to build their drug lab and hydroponics basins that they will be secretly growing psychoid leaves in. These leaves are the raw materials to make flake. The problem is, that to grow the plants, they need sun lamps. And sun lamps take a massive amount of power to run. Like I'm talking a lot. So to get more power, me and the boys need to research geothermal energy. Look, a guy crashed right next to the duck pen. Maybe if they rescue him, they can fill his head with duck and drug propaganda. Oh no, more people are coming to attack us. Deploy my German name. A tactical error was made. Mike is getting his ass kicked. He needs Jesse with a shank to come stab this guy. They knocked him out. So let's capture Vassallo and fill his head with our propaganda too. It's a success. And both Peruvian and Vassallo have joined the Los Poyos Hermanos family. With their help, they can build the geothermal power generator to power the lab. Soon, they will face a crisis of the waterfowl variety. You see, Ducks lay eggs. If these eggs are fertilized, they'll hatch, spawning several new ducks. If you keep doing that, your duck population will quickly explode to the point where your ducks will consume all of the food in their pen. This, and a surprise cold snap that killed the grass, led to the first duck crisis. Los Poyos Hermanos never really solved this crisis. The cold snap just kind of ended, and enough ducks died off so they weren't competing for food. Moving on from the duck crisis, they were thinking of expanding production of psychoid leaves, but they need to obtain more components. So Mike traveled to a nearby non-hostile village to trade some of their massive excess of rice, like a ton of rice, for components. 
With this mission successful, and the psychoid leaves ready to be harvested, it was time to cook. And I don't mean meals, I mean drugs. The first batch was completed. They produced 37 units of flake. It was time to sell their product to the nearby village. The first sale was a success. They took their profits and reinvested it into more components, bringing their ill-gotten gains back to Albuquerque so they can expand production even further. They built out their drug lab room, allowing for more space to grow psychoid plants. While this was happening, Sam, who was rescued and recruited to the gang, I didn't mention it, get over it, was randomly attacked by a lynx. She should have won her once. Heisenberg foolishly tried to grab her and take her back to safety, but was also downed by the lynx. So once again, we are asking for the Chad Jesse's aid. On a brighter note, more ducks hatch, so I guess the legitimate side of their business is doing well. They continued to grow their drug operation and sell what they had produced to the nearby towns, and also to merchants who visited their town to buy some flake, or ducks. Everything was going well, until the second duck crisis. Let me give you some background. I'm kind of new to animal management in RimWorld, and ducks eat hay in RimWorld. So me, being the absolute genius that I am, thought I could grow hay in the animal pen and they would eat it. Little did I know that the hay had to reach a certain amount of growth for the ducks to eat it. So they just starved until it grows. This one's on me. Ducks were dying left and right, starving from the lack of food available. Two actions were immediately taken. Population control, by that I mean murdering a ton of ducks, and cutting down the hayfield. It was a sad day. One that totally couldn't have been prevented. The Los Poyos Hermanos group now have a graveyard of ducks to reflect on their choices. This reflection led them to expand the pen for their ducks to ensure that there would be enough grass for these ducks to graze. The status quo was regained. Flake was cooked, drugs were sold, ducks were bred, and raiders were killed. Things returned to normal. Los Poyos expanded its membership, welcoming Cheney and Green to the family. They aided in expanding the area for a new lab, a larger lab that could produce so much flake that they would become the richest people in the Rim world. To make this expansion work, they needed more power. To achieve that, they needed more steel and obviously more components. And for that, they needed money. They got to selling ducks and flake to anyone who would buy them. Hey man, you wanna buy some ducks or maybe some drugs? <laughs> they would immediately reinvest their profits into steel and components. And soon, they built two more geothermal generators. But now they had a new problem, because there's always more problems. They had mined almost all of the steel in the area, and they had bought as much as was available in the nearby villages. So, yeah, they're running low on steel. Disaster also struck in a different form, and I'm not talking about Duck Crisis 3. Well, it is related to ducks, but, you know, not a crisis. A bunch of ducklings hatched and made a mad dash for the drug lab. They immediately ate a large portion of the plants growing there. Somebody's gonna have to pay for this. Mike arrested Vasala, one of the handlers for the ducks, and swiftly executed him. This would show the remaining members of Los Boyos Hermanos the price of failure. This was only a minor setback for them, as soon after they produced over a thousand units of flake. This would make them very rich, and after selling it and buying up all of the steel and components they could, they were left with 11,000 silver. It wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. Certain people got on each other's nerves. Sam attacked Jesse, and subsequently had to be executed. Los Poros Hermanos was losing people as fast as they could gain them. It wasn't all that bad. Some people were happy and found love. Mike and Chaney got married, and the group celebrated this joyful day for them. Unfortunately for the newlyweds, Heisenberg decided now was the time to risk mining the steel by the ancient danger. He was previously hesitant as he worried that they might not have enough manpower to handle the threat that was lurking inside. Mike was sent to take their profits that they had made from their drugs and ducks to buy up some weapons from the nearby town so that everyone could have a gun. They met up and guarded the area outside the ancient danger while the steel was mined. Fortunately, the extraction of steel didn't open the chamber. 
Everyone was relieved, but Heisenberg insisted that the wall be destroyed and open up the ancient danger so they could see what was inside. What waited for them inside was a hive of alien bugs. They swarmed out of the entrance they made and attacked the Los Poyos Hermanos group. Because of the arms run Mike had made, they were quickly disposed of. All that remained were the hostile humans that emerged from the cryo chambers. They weren't much of a threat either, but they did provide some new weapons and armor. It was a victory for Los Poyos Hermanos. They had conquered what they had thought to be their biggest threat. They could now keep expanding the ducks and drugs business and prosper, or so they thought. The victory for them was short. A massive raiding party attacked Albuquerque. There were too many to be defeated, but the Los Poyos Hermanos family had built this place, and they were going to die defending it. Green decided to make the hero play to run outside with their rocket launcher and managed to get off two missiles, killing four of the raiders before being downed. A barrage of enemy missiles brought down the side of their base, downing Peruvian and killing Green. The rest of the group retreated further into the building, into a hallway that would serve as a choke point. Mike and Cheney rotated, firing down the hallway at the intruders. It was too much for Mike's wife, Cheney, as she was soon downed. The group made a mad dash out of the building to get to the other side of the complex to make a last stand in the lab. Unfortunately, Jesse was hit on the way and was soon burned alive. Heisenberg tried to rescue his friend, but there was nothing he could do. Mike was next to perish, as there was no play to make except to stand his ground and fight. With everything seeming hopeless, the remaining two survivors decided to escape. They made a run for it out the building and into the rain-soaked mud. They were soon brought down in a hail of gunfire. Heisenberg then laid in the rain bleeding out as everyone he cared about was dead and everything he had built was burning to the ground. Things didn't turn out so well for them this time, but if you want to see things turn out well for me at least, watch this next video to see me make so much money that I destabilize the world economy and make society as a whole collapse.